everywhere. Oh, this time feels so fresh. Oh, this has been a while. That's wow. <laughs> this has been a while. Me walking outside talking to you on the vlog. Uh, it's just been too busy and uh, there's no excuse really. I should have been outside more because it's so important to be outside in nature. Ah. So yes, we're going to have a nice little catch up. I'm trying to hold my camera with my gloves on. This is just called water's frozen. Yes, I opened my inner circle. I worked on two launching two programs. I'm uh, quite proud of myself that I'm uh, that I'm ahead of, of all these projects. And um, well, you know how it goes. Then you launch one thing, or you have done one thing, and then uh, the other thing starts, or there is hardly any time to enjoy to reap the results. So I do try to do that and really enjoy. What I've accomplished and uh, also my ego is always demanding never satisfied so uh, yes I, I'm noticed that I myself can uh, get triggered in is it enough are the results okay am I satisfied did I do well oh you know how it goes just kick that ego in the corner and continue. Continue with what you're doing. Continue with what feels right. And that's so hard sometimes because once the ego takes over and uh, starts being nasty with you, it's very hard to find your balance again and continue. And But listen to your heart. Don't get... Don't wait for the applause of others. Don't wait for your ego to be satisfied. That's never going to happen. And in the end, you don't do what you do in your life for the applause of others, but for the feeling of being a good human being, of sharing your light and love with the world in whatever shape, form, your contribution uh, translates in because that depends on you and you're unique so don't forget that I'm talking to myself now as well so don't forget that you're unique and every expression of love and light is one that contributes to the collective and that's what we're here for so me too I'm not going to uh, be pulled in by oh lovely light by uh, wanting the applause or even not for my ego. I'm just going to continue. Today's Monday. And so is today I prepare for the rest of the week. I take care of my house, of my children, of myself, and um, prepare for all the coaching trainings I'm gonna give. I see a beautiful little bird there. Don't think you'll be able to see it. Nah, 
and I can't get my gloves on right now. Oh, look at this view. That's amazing. I missed it here. You always know, you know, you put off things like this. I mean, it, I think it's human. You put off doing exercise and going out in nature because you're too busy. Well, when you do go out, you have so much more energy when you come back because of the joy you find. So no, I should do it the other way around. That's why I just left my house in a mess. I need to do groceries, but I'm going to go do this first. Right, so I was talking about listening to your heart and continuing on your path forward, not being pulled in by the demands and uh, the nasty comments of your ego, nor of people outside of you. Make sure you have a lot of people around you that applaud you, that love you, and if they don't, Put them a little bit further away. Distance yourself from that frequency because it will hold you down. It will bring you down. It will hold you back. So, no, you need space to evolve, to grow, to feel joy, to be loved, to be light, and to expand. Uh, so, I'm continuing on my path, and that means that I take time to rebalance. Uh, and um, I gave this beautiful workshop on Saturday with my colleague Jeanette for the first time. A group of 20 people who we opened up to release dense energy to do a bit of healing in the group. That was beautiful. And um, yes, yeah, so I had a few questions yesterday about my path if this was what I need to continue with. I've got two more workshops like that planned in the new year. Well, we'll see what happens. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's just not clear. There's so many options. I can go, I've got my writing, I've got my workshops, I've got my work in the daycare center. I've got my organization, team coaching work, there's so much. And what is it I'm being called to do? What is it I'm being asked to focus on? And normally I just work with what is presented to me in front of me. And um, yeah, sometimes it is not what we wished for, hoped for. And then it's the challenge to commit and surrender. The frosty Dutch countryside, it is beautiful, it is beautiful. So sometimes it's not what we hope for, what we wish for, and then we're being asked to surrender to whatever is presented, even if we hoped for different forms, shapes, pathways. And uh, there are many more pathways, and sometimes it doesn't matter if you do journey off a little bit you'll always come back and uh, and if not in this lifetime then in another yeah you'll find your path and the path always leads back to the light because the end of the tunnel <laughs> you are back at the light so don't worry sit back enjoy and deal with the feelings of uncomfort, discomfort, disease, stress, insecurity, because that's life and it is. But it's not always that easy, is it?
So in the process of finding your path, oh, it is really too cold not to wear a glove. In the process of finding your path, it takes finding silence. And literally sometimes just no music, no people, just being by yourself and being present with yourself. Find some time to just be. To be alone so you can well, return to the innocence, return to the silence. Oh. They're too small, they're my sons. I couldn't find mine. Return to the silence, return to you. Because it's very hard to uh, not listen to all the outside noise if you're surrounded by noise. So sometimes just be, come back to yourself, come back to your silence, your senses. Because when you do take time, you will start hearing the voice of your heart, of your intuition or your soul again. And it will whisper. So, doing that meditation daily, committing to self-love, self-healing by releasing density from last night, from what you are dealing with, is very, very, very important. Otherwise, you get, you get stuck in those densities. You get stuck in worries, you'll get nowhere. So I did that myself as well this morning. Now I'm walking outside because I know I just ah, breathe in life and just enjoy this beautiful area I live in and get inspired again. And I wrote in the inner circle this morning about taking compassionate action. We're in the third week of Advent in the first two weeks, I talked about self-love and about trust in the second week. And this week is all about compassionate action because joy, the word that is in tradition, uh, committed to the third week of Advent, joy can be found in anything really, but especially in sharing your love. So. If you have found it, and if you can trust it, surrender to it, know that everything will be okay. Know that the divine's got your back. Um, you can start taking compassionate action. So this morning for me was about going back to self-love. And the moment I sit down in meditation, that rush of light and love flows through me like overwhelms me sometimes i'm connecting again i'm remembered again with the divine inside of me and around me <sighs> and i know and i trust again and it just lifts me up instantly and if i don't know what to do like on the moment i'm a bit it's a bit foggy what way should i go where is my life taking me where is my path taking me? I commit to doing three tasks that day. And uh, today I work at home, so. But even just committing to cleaning your house, doing groceries, preparing nice food can be divine work. And when you compassionately do that, commit to it and pour your whole love and all your energy into it. So no split energy and density pours into the food unconsciously but if you truly just dedicate to sacredness in everything you do ooh, that line's shining bright in everything you do there's grace in everything there's grace in everything uh, so for me today i have a few more tasks than three really but that's always the problem so yeah i'm going to do groceries I'm going to clean my house and then I've got work to prepare. I have two lessons to prepare for the Path to Awakening group 
and the Path of Truth group, one in English, one in Dutch. And I have a workshop to prepare. I'm doing tomorrow. And this is going to be magical. Oh, look at this club. I really love them, but they also scare me a little bit. And I have found if my vibration is chunky, if I'm not in alignment, they feel that. And my vibration is off, they react to it and they start defending themselves. And if I'm in a good place, they're fine. They're very protective of their tribe. And so they should be. <laughs> so this is a little test if my vibration is off or not. I'm going to respect them and keep my distance. today. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a beautiful compliment. They have been nasty to me before and I did. At one time I was really not in a good place. But now I am. Nice compliment. So yeah, tomorrow, beautiful workshop. Let me tell you quickly, because I need to move on as well. At the daycare, or at the school I'm working, it's a daycare centre and a school in one. There is one group, I think they're eight years old. The eight-year-old group, that class is having problems. I do my teaching to adult people about how to professionally work with each other, how to communicate, how to be effective, professional, but I'm actually teaching them how to be loving people, how to communicate and be from a place of respect. And uh, I write about this in my book, in my articles. I've used the theory of Eric Byrne, the um, transactional analysis, and I've changed, I've tweaked it. So it's very spiritual and I can use it in professional areas. I can use it in personal development and I can really open it up. And then we're just explaining what the fifth dimension is and how you fall back into third, fourth five, and the fifth all the time until you become more conscious and aware and awake and become more stable in your vibration and you get less triggered because you heal <sighs> out of self-love and out of compassion. So this is what I teach. And tomorrow I'm uh, asked to do a workshop to explain just that because they're already working with that. The teachers have explained this and we created this beautiful board with a golden heart when you are in that dimension and with a how do you say that? Uh, a thunder when you're not. So I'll show it to you. I'll explain it. And um, yeah, so I'm going to go into that group. I'm going to light a candle and I'm going to take with me my chocolate hearts. Yeah, I'm going to explain them and ask them if they want to join in this game and learn together how to be compassionate and loving and inclusive inclusive to everyone in the circle because otherwise the circle breaks and that has an effect on everyone not just on that one kid and uh, they will remain in the circle that spirals downwards and not upwards so I'm going to explain that tomorrow and it's actually quite healing for myself as well I used to be pushed out of the circle in my classroom. I was different, I was weird, I was not accepted. I was very different when I was younger. So um, I grew up with this classroom and I kind of became the position of the loner. And my teachers, uh, 
but it probably meant well but i didn't know what to do so yeah they placed me on a table to sit alone by myself and everybody was sitting in groups at the table back then and um oh all sorts happened i was uh, scared to go home and leave the school because they'd wait for me uh my clothes would get ripped or my bike would get stolen or ah it was not nice it was not nice you know when kids can be really harsh and once you have that label it's very hard to get rid of that so my teacher one time thought it would be a really good idea to place me in the middle of the group in that circle i now understand why circles are so important on my path so he placed me in that circle and then he asked all the children around me all my classmates to say something nice about me which he probably meant really well but it was the laughter and the jokes and the shame oh, they were tremendous <laughs> and without giving children boundaries they will just yeah what happened they started just joking you know you know i could just feel that they weren't being honest and um uh it was very traumatizing <laughs> that moment i'll never forget it and for years i could i couldn't tell this story without crying because it was just so embarrassing and it hurt me so much and it told me so much i realize now <laughs> It taught me so much how being in a circle of love is so important. And when people don't feel part of that circle, how painful that can be. And I realized that's what I came to learn and came to do in a I can pay that forward now. <laughs> I didn't really realize that until this moment. So I just, uh, this morning, started thinking of all the things I'm going to explain and say that grown up people just forget, and children just forget how, how love and light works and how you, should be feeding that life light with your own light and not breaking the circle but be very keep it sacred and you're being asked here to do just that not just that but people forget people just have forgotten how to do that and they don't show the right example anymore to children not all of them but there's a lot of children who grow up in these surroundings where they don't get shown the right example of how to live from love and light neither did I and still you can find it back and you can find it back. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to remember them and remember myself, <laughs> do a bit of self-healing and a bit of healing of the world. Oh, yeah, looking forward to that. I'm going to bring my chocolate hearts and I've thought of a game I'm going to ask to play with me. They'll get one chocolate heart for themselves to remember them. They'll get one to hand out at home or at school to someone who deserves or needs it, who's forgotten. And they get one to keep. And if it's necessary, they can share it with somebody. And I'll say that I'll be back in the new year to see how many chocolates they've got left. left. And the beautiful thing is that what you give out, you'll get back. So the chocolates that have been given away, I will multiply again. Because I want to teach them that 
You shouldn't hold on to anything in your life. You're here to share, to give out, to expand, to multiply in love and light. So when I get back in January, I'm going to multiply the chocolates that have been handed out. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Looking forward to that. I'm sending you love. Bye.